Hey everybody, Mr. Tyler here with my daughter Penny. Here, let me make room. All right, so you should be able to see right up there, right? Okay, so we have Penny is gonna be doing the art in the corner. I'm gonna be doing the art here. We are really excited to, do, to meet the next art master. Do you know who it is? Um, All right. That was close. That was a good guess. So his name is a man named Juan, but it's spelled different than you might expect. Juan Miro. Oh, yeah. But it's spelled like that because he was from Spain. Uh, so in Spain, in Spanish, that's you would pronounce that Juan Miro. Uh, let's see. So he lived ooh, over 100 years ago. And you know what he was known for? You've done some activities Abstract. already. Abstract. That just means lots of different shapes. Uh, and you can kind of use your imagination. There's a lot of imagination in today's exercise. So that's really exciting. I draw abstract things a lot. Yeah. So uh, he liked using lines and shapes and different colors. And we're going to dive into that. You should have your practice guide and your examples uh, as well. You, you've already been studying Juan Miro. So that's really exciting. So let's, dive, let's talk about what we need. We're gonna need our big piece of paper here and we're gonna keep it horizontal. We need some colored pieces. You should have a blue slip of paper, a red square and two yellow squares, right? Yes. Okay. You need a black marker, Yes. pencil, yes. scissors, glue, and cotton ball. This is not cotton candy, cotton ball. And your teacher has something else. That's for later. So uh, let's jump in. So you have your paper there. First things first, class, let's turn over our paper and write our name. Of Okay, so we're going to start with one long abstract line. So let me kind of explain it before you try. We're going to start with our marker and put it down on the page somewhere near. Go really lightly, but just make a long kind of flowing line that here. How about Penny? You watch me do it and then you copy me. So a long flowing line that's kind of wavy you can spiral around you can cross over itself but keep it on the page the whole time so you're going to do one line that kind of fills the whole page nice and big so i'm going to start down here and i'm just going to kind of go kind of wherever you want to go you can go back and forth cross over cross over kind of nice flowing lines and then stop when you kind of have filled most of the page Let's watch, yeah. There you go. Yep, cross over that line again. Ooh, that's very nice. How does that feel, class? Yeah, so just kind of fill up as much of the page as you want, but kind of nice big flowing lines. You can kind of see both mine and Penny's here. That's pretty fun. Okay, so as you're finishing that, all right, class, hold on. I have some instructions for your teacher. All right, so, so here's what your teacher is going to do. You just finished this. Now you're, you class just kind of back up and wait. Your teacher has a nice bucket full of this powder. See it in there. So I'm gonna do a little message from the future and Tell your teacher the amount of chalk that I put on the page was probably too much. So use maybe even half of what I did. Uh, but you want, because uh, yeah, I used too much. So do that. Now let's go back to the present. They call it tempura powder. Tempura? Yeah, I think it's a <coughs> ground up piece of chalk or something. So chalk dust. Tempura powder on the paper. And so here's what your teacher's gonna come and do really quick. When you finish that, they're gonna take, I'm gonna show you over here so you can kind of see, I think probably about a, I don't know, what's that like an eighth 
of the spoonful that you have there and put just a, a dab on three space, three places. It can be kind of anywhere on the page, but not too much. Just like three small piles of this pink stuff. In class, don't touch your page. Just kind of stay back until your teacher finishes. So then I'm gonna do three on mine. So this might take a little while. There's a lot of students in the class. Yeah. So go ahead, be patient, let the, the teacher go. As, as they finish, then you, we can start. But we'll just give you a little bit of time. I know you gotta get to a lot of students, probably like 29 students yeah, on some class. of your classes, right? My class. That's a lot. So when you're ready, uh, once, once your teacher passes you and you have three little piles of pink powder on your page, this is what the cotton ball is for. So what we're going to try to do is not spill any of this powder off of the page, but use it all up. So you're going to use your cotton ball and just kind of start in the middle and gently kind of start rubbing it around. It doesn't have to fill the whole page, but you just kind of move it all around, move it all around. And if there's more powder, go back over it again and just kind of keep moving that powder around. Some places might be darker, some places might be lighter. I think mine's gonna fill up the whole page. Yeah. So as best you can, just kind of keep rubbing that around. The goal is to have no powder left at the end. Yes, yes. I think I added a little too much powder on ours, Penny. Yeah, probably. Don't you think? Somehow. Well. We'll get some more. Okay, I think that's enough for mine. There. That's very good. Can't even see it in there. Yes, yes. Okay. So now you've rubbed that around, you've got all the, the loose bits out, and your, your page is kind of nice and colored in. So put your cotton ball to the side. And then grab your blue piece of paper. Ooh. Did you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now with the pencil, do the same sort of thing that we did the first time with the marker. Remember that? So take one line and just kind of nice flowing line, big, big loops and cross over themselves several times. So I'm just going to kind of go cross, cross. Make sure you cross the line a couple times. So now, uh, I think this isn't in the instructions, but if it helps you, because it, it's kind of hard to see, but what we want to do is study this and find some full shapes that you could actually cut out eventually. So as big as you can. So I'm, I'm trying to see, based on where your, your pencils cross each other, and pick like two of the biggest shapes that you can find and kind of just outline them so that they would be one piece that you could cut out of the paper. So I'm going to show you. So I could do kind of like this. And I could put this piece on the edge. Wait, can I, can I like put this up here? Because, well. Yeah, whichever. waves. So did you, could you find like two shapes? No, yeah, 
So I just kind of outlined it. If you don't have to use the marker there, you could just kind of find it and maybe color it in a little darker with your pencil. But we're looking for two, I found like two big shapes with the pencil marks that I made. And what we're gonna do after that is cut them out. So yeah, that's great. So cut that out and cut that out. Well, I didn't draw pencil lines there and there. That's okay. I just didn't want them to be that big. Oh, you, you changed it as you were making the shape? Yeah. That's great. That's good uh, creativity. So then carefully take your scissors and cut out those two shapes as best you can. And you save your scraps. You can even, you might even decide you want to do three shapes. So Penny, you can even, you have all this empty space over here. You could use one of those shapes too. You might want to cut out a third one if you want. So you, so class, you can decide. You can, out of your blue piece of paper, you can make two or three shapes and just get creative with it. Do you feel like you want to do a third one while we're waiting? Okay. Oh yeah. Nice. So while Penny's cutting out her third blue shape, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the yellow. Actually, so, I can't cut that down. Okay, you can save that because we can make more in a little bit. We'll, once you once we figure out what we're going to do with them, you might want to make some more. So, wait for those. Now grab one piece of yellow. Ready? So one square of yellow. Let's fold it right in half. Okay. Now fold it in half again. So it's a square. Good. Okay, now draw a shape, an abstract shape that kind of fills this little square with your pencil. Let's do your pencil. So I'm going to do the shape of sort of a bird. Yeah, whatever. Except more like an eel bird. Wait, is it supposed to touch the bottom? Just as long as it kind of fills the, fills the size. So that's, that's great. Um, so, so now, as best you can, try to cut that shape out while it's all closed up. So, so you're cutting four layers at the same time, right? Is that hard to cut? Kind of. Oh, wow. Yeah, so take your time with it. Just try to cut out that abstract shape through all four layers at once as best you can. and save the scraps just on a pile. We might use those later. So then what we should have is four of the same shape. Four birdie eels. Nice. Okay. So now let's take, uh, what's going to be the next one? I think we want to do red next. Yeah, I guess. Yes. So let's do the red one. And, oh wait, no. Let's do the yellow one. Sorry, okay. I have my instructions here. So on the yellow sheet, 
we're going to actually not fold it. We're going to do what we did on the blue sheet. So we're going to draw some abstract lines all over the place. Oh, are we supposed to use a pencil on that one? Yeah, that's okay. So do a pencil this time. Okay. So just draw some of those squiggly lines and cross over themselves. Cross your line like five or six times. And then maybe go back through and trace, just study it and find one kind of big abstract shape that you can cut out. So I'm gonna do Okay, so now try to go back through and just cut out that shape. And you can actually cut out a couple of these shapes. So I'm seeing a few that I feel like I could cut out. This one looks kind of like a boat. Nice. I think that looks kind of like a bird. Yeah, try to cut, cut a couple of these shapes out. Hmm, any others? Okay, so now, okay, we got a bunch of shapes. We got our red paper left and that's it. So this one, you get to make a choice. We can do the same thing we just did with that second piece of yellow and do squiggly lines and cut them out. Or we can do it with the first yellow and fold, fold, and make four of the same shapes. I think we should do the folding one. Okay, how about you do the fold and I'll do the other kind so okay. that we can show both. So class, you can choose. Do you want to draw squiggles and cut out those shapes, or do you want to fold, fold, and draw one shape and cut it out? You choose. Penny's going to do the folding. I'm just going to do one of these. And then just take your scissors and cut out Cut out a few shapes. Hey, I took my scissors. Oh, sorry. You use those, I will use these. I took my scissors. Hmm. It's okay, you can't really mess this up. Even if you if you cut the wrong thing off, we'll be able to still use this because this is just abstract art. We're gonna make something fun out of this. 
Hmm. I think that one kind of looks like an airplane almost. I think it looks like a manta ray. Ooh, or a manta ray. That's cool. Why is it so hard to Ooh. cut it? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I almost got poked in the eye by your scissors. Well, have the that that be a lesson to everyone. Don't lean in and stare at your partner cutting. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. Okay, so maybe put the put the scrap pieces to the side, and get start with your starting blocks right here. Starting blocks. Starting pieces, uh, and just start. I would start with the biggest ones first, and here's where you kind of just get to have fun. Imagine those. The first marker squiggle that we did on the white page is like your background. And all of these are going to become pieces. Foreground. They're going to become objects in the foreground of your, of your art. So you can kind of move them all around. Start with the blue, then add the yellow, then add the red. And kind of just start to imagine, what could this be? If you thought it was anything, what would it be? I might hmm. change this. Okay, and then start Can once you do them? that. Well, let's let's arrange everything first and If you want what I would do is actually maybe Flip your pages over so that all of your pencil and marker is not showing But you can do either way if you like the pencil marks there, but if you flip them all over then there are they're just blank pieces of paper so you can kind of just arrange them however you want and just start keep moving stuff around until you kind of see an image. And let's see, I don't even know what this could be. Do they look like animals? Do they look like, uh, like planes and cars? Do they look like, look like mountains animals. and trees? Whatever you yeah. kind of maybe imagine a landscape. Is it in the city? Is it in the woods? Is it in the jungle? Is it under the sea? And see what you can make out of that. You can kind of, you can stack them on top of each other if it helps. So you could have the red going on top of the yellow. Ooh, that kind of looks like a hat. I don't know. It does look kind of like a hat. Let's see. So, once you kind of do that, you kind of picture what do you think your drawing looks like. And I'll give you another little hint. If you just can't figure out an image, you're like, I don't know if it looks like the sea or the forest or the city. Just start arranging it in whatever way looks pretty for you. Looks What, what do you like? Uh, and it can, it can remain very abstract. Maybe you never quite figure out what it's supposed to look like. Just make it so that it looks good in your eyes. So maybe you just are focusing more on the patterns than the actual images. Okay, so once you know where you want them, now just carefully with a little dab of glue, start putting them all on the page as you have them arranged. So start with the ones in the back first, and then put the ones that you've layered on top over that. Like gluing them? Yeah, so glue them on. And as you're thinking about it, if you want, you can always you can start using a few other pieces of scrap paper as you're kind of filling out your page. You can add some more 
to it, but try to get at least these ones down as fast as possible. There you go. I'm making an ocean with a boat in it. Oh. And there's birds in a balloon thing. Nice. I think these red pieces look sort of like birds and then this is their wing. Yeah. I decided mine was an underwater scene. Oh, yes. So I have... And then all these things are snakes. Sea snakes. Nice. Sea I have a big sea creature eating a little sea creature eating an even littler sea creature. Looks like this? a shell. Oh, yeah, maybe it's a shell. So, hopefully, you're at this stage where you're starting to glue your pieces down. And just try to kind of remember where you had them arranged and then just go through and glue as many down as you can. So, once you have glued those pieces down, we can go back with our marker, and don't use this to color a lot. You're just kind of putting dots and lines so you can add some, uh, just some details. So don't use this to color in a lot of shadings. Because the, the ink will go over it. But yeah, so put like details like eyes or beaks or feathers or scales, whatever kind of thing, bark. So whatever you put on your page, you can just kind of add a little detail here and there. So maybe like an eye.
sure are more things. Yeah. So after you've put add a little detail on there, you you can if you have some time, you can use some of your scraps that we collected earlier, and you can add some more detail. So you mm -hmm. uh, you can just cut out whatever you want to use, or even rip it up and use some other scraps to add some more detail on there. Uh, again, depending on how much time you have, you can check with your teacher to see. But uh, finish at least this first thing. Get get your pieces of paper down. Start adding some detail. Uh, so I have, I don't know, a little underwater scene. Here's some kind of coral. And then I made this big clam monster eating a smaller red fish that's eating four little fish. So I don't know. What do you ex story, explain yours here, the Penny? Story what, do you, of mine what do you got is, here? The story of mine is that's the ocean waves. And then the basilisk is riding a boat. Those are the other sea basilisks. And then this weird guy is eating one of them. And then there's some birds flying, and that guy's the son of this big guy. Nice. And that's where they live. Okay, awesome. That sounds great. Then I'm going to cut out another guy. Hey, one last thing. You all have been doing this art for so long, ever since, I don't know, all, all last year at least. Uh, so, I think you're ready to become official artists and sign your art. Have you ever noticed that? You go to a museum or you look at some famous art and there in the in the bottom right corner there's a squiggly little signature. In cursive. Yeah, so a little cursive signature right there at the bottom. Sign your art. Uh, maybe you want to use, I don't know, I guess you could use your marker if you want, but just try to do it really small and down there at the bottom so everyone knows, ooh, that is a work of art by this artist. You're scribbling. Why did you write a scribble? It looks more artistic. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write my name. <laughs> you could just write your name. You could just do cursive. Yeah. So sign your art before okay. the art the art period is over. And then you can just keep yeah, adding some some more detail. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for studying Juan Miro with us. Hope this was fun. Uh, this is definitely something you could do at home, right? Just find a bunch of scraps of pieces of paper. Um, we have so many leftovers. We could do a whole nother episode with just our leftovers if we wanted to. Ooh, look at this one. You could just use what? that and put that on our page. That looks like kind of looks like, like a canvas. Canvas, or it looks kind of like a mouth. Put oh, that on our look, page. This so much stuff. Since these are just the waves, this guy's diving into the other water. Nice. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. See you later.